Hello and welcome to another edition of Bourbon and Bullets. And yes, I know I haven't posted anything in some time. That's largely due to the unmotivating factors at play here. Every time I put something up, YouTube unsubscribes subscribers. So whenever I put something up, I, you know, my, my subscriber list goes down. And um, it's, as I say, it's, it's, it, it's not the biggest motivator. Although that said, I do realize there's people out there, um, people you know, you tell me you've been following the channel for years. Certainly, you know my patrons who have been supporting the channel greatly appreciate it. Obviously, um, and with the massive propaganda push going on in the world today, I realize there's never been a greater need for alternative media. So I have to keep going, and um, you know, not to mention there's things on my mind uh, I want to talk about and. Hopefully you'll find it interesting. Number one on that list is the march to get us all wearing masks. Now, this past weekend, uh, there was the march to unmask across Canada, which was pretty successful considering it didn't have a lot of lead time. Um, one of, a friend of mine out there in Montreal, she helped organize it up there, and uh, she was very, very uh, taken with the, with the size of the response. I think she said about 500 people came out in Montreal, which, I mean, Montreal's like pretty much, you know, crazy ground zero. So that's, that's pretty good. Without, without much promotion, the media did cover it. Um, apparently she was interviewed for it uh, and a few others. And of course, you know, the media, the left-wing media, they not picked. So not that she's a nut, far from it. She's a very intelligent young woman. But, but you know, they get some of the others, um, you know, they, they call them conspiracy theorists. And they say, you know, they find the people that say that, you know, 5G is causing, you know, coronavirus. So they find the people that said, oh, it was created in a Chinese lab, which, you know, it might be. But, I mean, there's no doubting that it actually came from China. But, you know, they want to find the people that can sound as extreme as possible so they can just discount this movement as a fringe movement. Meanwhile, is all of those, um, all of those who don't wear masks and succumb to state-sponsored submission... We know it's the people that are wearing masks that are the that are the crazies. They're the chicken littles that believe that we're in the midst of a black pay, black plague, and that you know there's there's people you know cruising the cities, ringing bells, saying "Bring out your dead." I mean, my God, it's I remember back in April when we had a bout of good weather in Vancouver and everyone crowded on the beach, you know, all the, all the nervous Nellies, all the COVID crazies all said, oh, in two weeks, those, the people are going to be dropping dead. They're all going to be in hospital. Didn't happen. Then back in May, when there was that big push, you know, uh, in Toronto, when everyone crowded uh, Trinity Bellwoods Park in Toronto, uh, again, you know, all the COVID crazies, um, shaking the finger, oh, they're, they think they're invincible, but, you know, they're all going to be in the hospital in a few weeks. You wait and see. No, d didn't happen. Yeah, did, didn't happen. Then, uh, later in May, all of a sudden the Black Lives Matter uh, protests came out, and thousands, tens of thousands of people crammed into city centers all over North America, including Vancouver. Jack Poole Plaza in Vancouver was packed with thousands of thousands of people. All of a sudden, all, we've been hearing that, oh, staying home saves lives, can't go out, got to social distance. All of a sudden, our health experts, the people, we had to listen to the science, we had to listen to the health experts, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, no, no, no problem. Teresa Tam said, no problem. In fact, a thousand um, health experts, air quotes, in the U.S. signed a letter saying, yes, it's, you should go out and protest but only for left-wing progressive causes. They actually, they actually said that, and they actually stipulated that that really happened. That's something that happened here in BC. Um, Bonnie Henry, the the health minister here in BC, she says, "Oh, you got a social distance. That's that's, you know, if if even wearing a mask, you got a social distance, utmost importance." But she says, "Oh, no, no, no. That 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 Black Lives Matter protest when we had ten thousand people crammed into the the center of Vancouver. Oh, no, we didn't have any. We didn't have any from that. Oh, no problem. That was no problem. Oh, a bunch of kids on Canada got together in Kelowna on the beach. Oh my God. Oh, we may have to make masking mandatory here in BC. Oh no, we can't have that. Yeah, and no, I, I'm I'm 
sounding silly, but I, that's not an exaggeration. This is the narrative that they are spinning. Um, okay, so, but anyways, the reason I bring the Black Lives Matter protest mainly is because, of course, once they had that, uh, you know, the government, and when I say government, just it, it could be left or, or right wing. They, they just love the sense of control that this gives over us, uh, our lives. As we've seen, um, you know, Doug Ford in Ontario, who thinks that people should be wearing masks for years. You know, no problem. Just, just wear a mask. Yeah, for years. You know, show your submission to the state. Because once they had those Black Lives Matter protests, obviously, I mean, yes, as I pointed out, they still try and promote the social distancing line, but it's a lot harder. Um, and they, they know that, you know, even though people are complete sheep, there, there's a limit. So now it's, oh, you got to wear a mask. That's the only thing that will save your life. Back in April, at the height of the death rates, uh, pretty much around the world, Dr. Fauci, who, you know, the darling will laugh because he clearly hates Donald Trump, he said, man, I mean, wear a mask if it makes you feel better, but you know, it's really not going to do any good. Teresa Tam, she, of course, um, also said, uh, echoing the World Health Organization, which Canada clearly takes its marching orders from. Uh, don't worry about wearing a mask. Just stay home, social distance. Staying home saves lives. Does it, but now, now the way to get control. Back then, by the way, I don't, I don't, the main reason they were doing that was because China was short on personal protection equipment. So they wanted to get as much to China because, you know, the World Health Organization takes its marching orders from China. Why Dr. Fauci is so enamored with China? Well, all the globalists seem to be. So, I mean, who knows? Teresa Tama practically, you know, basically works for China. Um, so they wanted to make sure everything could get to China because um, they, they just they didn't even have, you know, surgical masks for their hospitals. So, um, you know, Canada sent all of its personal protection equipment over there. And that's why they were saying, you know, we don't need to wear masks. But now... Now that uh, it's summertime, people are sick of the stay home orders, people are sick of the lockdowns, businesses are failing, businesses want to reopen, people want to socialize and have a normal life. Now they realize, oh, we've got to find a new way to get them to submit to the state. Hey, if everyone wears a mask, we know they're slaves. I mean, obviously that's an exaggeration, but when I see people walking around in masks, out, out here in the West Coast where it's not mandatory. And in Vancouver, I'd say maybe 10% of the population is wearing it. I mean, it depends on the suburb. If you go out to Richmond where um, it's like 90% Chinese, 90% of the people are wearing masks. It's just part of their culture, so they just do it. You know, they, they, they're very, you know, they, they're mainly, it used to be they were Hong Kong Chinese. But now they're mainly mainland Chinese. And, you know, they're entire, entire from, you know, from birth, they've been taught to be submiss submissive to the state. So, there you go. Um, in Vancouver proper, you know, as I say, you, you see maybe 10% maybe of people. We've had less than 200 deaths in BC. So, but now, but nonetheless, BC's health minister, because people are congregating on the beach, people are, you know, as I said, people up there in Kelowna trying to enjoy life, she's like, oh, we may have to bring in mandatory mask orders. Because we can't have people trying to think that they can have a normal life. And she wags her finger. I mean, obviously she doesn't say it, but, you know, we know what they're thinking. Just to give you an example, uh, in Metro Vancouver, in the outskirts, um, in what they call the valley, if you're not familiar with Metro Vancouver, there's an old uh, drive, one of the last remaining drive-in movie theaters in North America. And, you know, I'm pleased to say that they were doing a booming business during lockdown. It was one of the few enjoyments people could go out and do, even though they were limiting, they were limiting it by 50%, even, which, I mean, how dangerous are you? You're in your car, for God's sakes, but still, they, they, you know, they kept it to 50% capacity, which was 200 cars. You know, it's still pretty big. So, and, you know, let's face it, you know, during non-COVID times, that's probably all they were getting because obviously people don't go to drive-ins as much. So, you know, 50% was fine. They, they, they clearly could make that work. They were, they were filling up almost every night because people, it was great to have a place to go. So, you know, Dr. Bonnie Henry goes, sees this, and she goes, oh, 
oh, we can't have that. We can't have people enjoying themselves. She, she, she said, no, no, now, now only 50 cars max. 50 cars max in a drive-in theater that can handle 400 cars. You know, how, how does that make any, any sense at all? Just a little over 10% capacity. It's even worse than, than what they're doing to restaurants. But because people are going out and enjoying it, because a business was actually thriving. So the state had to step in and go, nope, can't have that. And I mean, okay, you might say, well, no, she's just, she's just being, you know, the, the, those of you who might be skeptical or naysayers might say, well, she just has the, uh, you know, she just has the public health at, 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 as, as her in, in, number one interest. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's sitting in your car at a drive-in theater, that, that's going to put you at risk for this, you know, for this, this virus that, that only affects, you know, by the CDC's own numbers, 0.02%. Same as the, same as the flu, same mortality rate as the common flu. But we all have to be subservient to the state, which is why, again, big push for mask laws. And this, and, you know, the lockdowns were one thing, you know, sort of destroying the economy, but that couldn't go on forever. Even though they want a form of that going on forever, where we are pretty much in a centrally planned Marxist state. I mean, that is, that is their end goal. Certainly it is in Canada. I mean, certainly there's factions in the U.S. that make no bone. And I'm not talking about, you know, Black Lives Matter radicals. I'm talking about people in the Democratic Party, the AOCs, the Ian Omars. They want a, you know, uh, a centrally planned, planned economy, centrally cl controlled Marxist state. Um, they don't say it in exactly those words, but everything that they say about their plans for the economy, if they ever had control of it, make that abundantly clear. Um, and certainly in Canada. Uh, it's the same thing. They want to make sure that you know we are only we're all beholden to the state, which means we're slaves to the state. And to show our slavery to the state, we should all wear masks. You know, it dehumanizes you, takes away you know your ability to smile and 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 show expressions. Masked, dehumanized population, a soulless, joyless, ambition ambitionless world. You can't have any ambition because everything is controlled by the state. You can't have a business because oh, that's a danger. Well, you 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 know, of course, everything's always in the public interest. Everything's always in the pub interest of public safety. So much evil. I've said this in other videos, and you, so much evil has been done in the name of protecting public safety. And boy, have we seen that in spades during this pandemic, and it is a pandemic. And, you know, whenever I have, you know, whenever I get into these arguments on social media with, with you know, the, the, the COVID crazies and the chicken littles say, well, we've all got to uh, hide under our beds forever. They say, oh, you're, you know, you're selfish and you just want, you want to, you want to kill granny. It's like, well, no. Uh, how many deaths have we had? How many deaths of despair have we had because of this, of this pandemic? And then, then they'll, they're, and then their last refuge is, oh, you think it's a, you're one of those crazies who think it's a hoax. No, I don't think it's a hoax. I think the virus is real, obviously. Yes, over half a million, closing on 600,000 people have died from it around the world. Yes, that's a bad flu season. Bad flu season can be over 600,000 globally. In 5758 and 6869, uh, the Hong Kong flu and the Asian flu, we had over a million deaths globally at a time, obviously, when the population was much, much lower. Woodstock took, took place when it was towards the end of the Asian flu, but they didn't cancel Woodstock. They had a half million people, you know, basically, literally on top of each other. Um, and none of this nonsense of shutting down the entire, not just the economy, but, you know, your every aspect of freedom. And then demanding that the population wear these dehumanizing masks. So, I won't wear a mask ever. I'm not going to do it. Um, if they do make it, I'm, I'm lucky to live 
in a province where they haven't brought in these ridiculous mask laws, but I'm not going to do it. And I know that the people that marched across Canada, um, including, you know, in Ontario and, as I said, Montreal, where they do have mask laws, um, they obviously weren't wearing masks, and they go about their daily business without wearing masks. And they will risk incurring the wrath of the state to fight for their freedoms and for your freedoms and for everyone's freedoms. Mayor John Tory, he who likes to stuff $5 bills down tranny strippers, uh, down the G-string of a tranny, tranny stripper, um, I should say, apropos of nothing, <laughs> I don't know why, I, I only bring it up because it just shows, you know, the character of the man. He, so Ontario, which has been under some pretty draconian laws under so-called People's Premier Doug Ford, who has been anything but. John Tory feels that, no, we can't go to st a stage three opening, which is still pretty damn restrictive, and they still have all the mask laws in place. And, you know, he basically wants to make, you know, even if they allow bars to open, which he doesn't want, I don't know, maybe if they had tranny strippers, he'd be all for it, but other than that, um, if bars do open, I mean, the amount of regulations and mask wearing and distancing, you know, it, it would be all but impossible for, for a bar to function, uh, to operate profitably. You know, they just can't bring in that amount of staff and, and you know, operate at less than 50% capacity. Um, he wants people wearing masks, even out on the patio. I mean, it's just absurd. You know, I mean, what does he think is going to happen to the uh, to these bars? I mean, what, do they think that they can just operate at less than 50% capacity indefinitely? They can be closed indefinitely, and then, you know, when he gives the go-ahead, oh, it'll be all, of course, they're never going to give the go-ahead. That's the, that's the whole point. These these businesses will be gone, and, oh, but don't worry about it. The state will provide you with entertainment, They just like they did in the Soviet Union. We'll have state-run restaurants and state-run nightclubs and state-run bars. Oh, there'll be lots of, re you know, restrictions and regulations, but, hey, it's all free, you know? Go ahead, enjoy your, your state-sponsored uh, entertainment. You think I'm exaggerating? You wait and see when all the, all the entertainment's shut down. Because they, you know, they, are, they obviously are the enemy of private enterprise. If, if they really cared about the public safety, they would be looking at the rising deaths of despair, the rising deaths of people who do not seek treatment for cancers or uh, heart disease because they're, they've, they've been so, you know, they've been whipped up into this hysteria over this pandemic that they don't go to the hospital and they suffer from, you know, an ailment that is much, much more lethal than, you know, this ridiculous virus, which, although highly contagious, is not highly lethal. And that brings me, okay, so I'm going to use that as a segue to another aspect of the hysteria that I see Almost entirely in Canada, strangely enough, I've heard a, bits and pieces of these stories in the U.S. and in Europe, but, you know, even with the U.S., even with their crazy media doing everything they can to whip people up in hysteria, I haven't heard these stories. And that is that the virus, oh, it's not just the flu. You'll suffer long-term lung damage, heart damage. Uh, neurological damage. All these things are caused by this by this virus. Not one, not one, you know, not one bit of evidence ever. But studies, the experts have studies. Those would be the experts who predicted 2.2 million deaths in the U.S. by August. Remember that that was the Imperial College study that basically started all this off. It said, oh, uh, you know. That, well, we got to do this. We got we to have this lockdown because, oh, millions of people are going to die. Never happened. It was by a guy, um, what's his name, Ni Nigel Ferguson, the idiot, the same guy that, you know, he's been responsible for a lot of these uh, hysterical um, uh, reactions. Uh, mad cow disease, which he predicted, you know, hundreds of thousands of deaths. Never, obviously never happened. Um, the H1N1, he predicted, million, again, millions of and millions. I think he said 200 million globally. Yeah, it was a lot less than that. 
yeah. Um, a big surprise, of course. He's he's a big you know he's a big climate change crazy as well. You know we're all going to die from climate change as well. So that probably shocks no one listening to this channel. Um, but anyways, he's the reason why we had all these lockdowns. Everybody latched on onto that. You know he was the one. He 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 learned through all these years of of these studies that he, if you, the most hysterical study it tends to be the one the governments listen to because they think oh well but you know. What if he's right and we don't do anything? We won't get reelected. So, you know, who cares about people's lives? Better shut everything down. It's in the public interest. Um, yeah, so the latest, uh, so the study is about all these supposed uh, health ailments um, due, to, uh, due to the virus have really taken hold. You know, I see people on social media going, Oh, and it's always these apocryphal stories. Oh, I know a guy. Oh, and he's a young guy, and, and now he can barely breathe. That, that hasn't happened. Nowhere has that happened. Okay, so now they're going to talk about the Canadian uh, Broadway star. I forget his name. The guy that, you know, he was in hospital for months. And he lost a leg. And the CBC was all over that because they love to show these stories of, you know, somebody that's, you know, young and healthy and vibrant dying from horribly from COVID, you know, because then we can, you know, they know that we'll all be scared into being proper little slaves to the state. The guy had diabetes, he had kidney trouble. I mean, that's what they don't report. The guy was a medical mess before he went in. This was not a healthy person. He was not a healthy 41-year-old. The guy, the, the guy had serious health complications. You know, he had a successful career despite having serious health complications. And, you know, number one of them was he was, he was obese. Number two, he had diabetes. Number three, he's having kidney trouble. He may have been close to kidney failure, um, which speaks to the reason why he lost the leg, because then the, you, you don't get proper circulation and you lose the leg. This has nothing to do with the virus, obviously. It, it's so absurd. And then, you know, the other apocryphal stories you'll get is, you know, people say, well, I had it and I recovered, but, oh, you know, I'm really fatigued. I've been fatigued for months. I can barely breathe. You know, all these sort of really nonspecific symptoms that, you know, they'll, they'll keep pushing. They say, oh, you know, you, you think, you, think you, you won't get it because, you know, you're under 70 and you're invincible, but, oh, you'll, you'll be suffering the health effects. Long and we don't know what the long-term health effects are. So that's a great thing that they can do because, you know, clearly – they don't have the you know the mortality rate to back up the hysteria and the alarmism, but they can you know these non-specific long-term health effects that they go and they're all out in the future. Oh my God, you know studies show you know they're going to have strokes, they're going to have this. There was one recently, um, just just to illustrate you know again you know the dishonesty of a CBC story about a 13-year-old boy that died and he had COVID-like symptoms, and then you go down 10 paragraphs and you find out. Um, he didn't have the virus. <laughs> That's not why he passed away. He had leukemia. I mean, you know, and anyway, so then, then we get into the whole, the whole thing about the inflated death rates, but I'm, I, that's a whole other story, so I won't go into that. Um, the main thrust was because on the heels of, you know, Unmask, the March to Unmask, you know, I wanted to do uh, a video that was high in my mind about the politics of masking. And um, I guess to sum up, if you wear a mask, you're a slave to the state. You know, I'm sorry, that, that's just it. And they're whipping up the hysteria to get you to wear a mask. And, you know, you'll see article and article in all the news media about how we need to make this the new normal, how we need to make this, you know, just nat a natural social thing so that we can all show our submission to the state. And that's what it's all about. Um, I probably didn't need 25 minutes to get to that, but you know, hopefully there was some interesting information in there for you um, uh, on top of that. So that's going to do it for this time. And uh, as usual, if you want to support the channel and drop a dollar or two in the virtual tip jar, greatly appreciate it. And until next time, this has been Bergen and Bullets.